What is going on, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls? You are on the sidelines with the sideline guys. And today, people, today, I'm joined once again by my esteemed, powerful co-host, the ubiquitous, the omnipresent, my guy, the pod father himself, Derek Myers. How's it going, brother? All is well, bro. How you doing? <laughs> doing amazing much better now right much better now that we yeah. are back again once again in your ear holes ladies and gentlemen so while we're here just gotta say thank you again for tuning in thank you so much for all the support you've been showing the show we really feel and appreciate all the love so make sure you continue doing it by supporting the brand you can follow us at OTS Media Co. on all social media platforms, OTS Media on YouTube, so that you can get all of this content brought straight to you in a streamlined and organized fashion. Derek, why don't you let the people know where they can find you as well? Most definitely. You can follow me at Derek underscore OTS. That's D-E-R-R-I-C-K, the black way to spell it. And don't you ever mistake that. You could catch me on Instagram as well as the TikTok. Whoa, excuse me. On Twitter as well as the TikTok machine at Negron MMA. You could also catch me on Instagram at Chris Negron underscore Derek. We've got a action-packed episode, baby. Yes, we, we have finally reached that part of the year that just got us filled to the brim, right? With love, excitement, anticipation, but most importantly, anxiety, right? We got a lot of shit going on now, right? It ain't just the NFL. Yes, sir. We got the NBA in full swing. And of course, it's only right that we spent our time reacting to everything that goes on in both of these worlds. So why don't we start out with the 2024 NBA season tip off? I know this was a very special moment for you as you guys got to raise number 18 in the arena. For some That's reason, it. ESPN was hating. They cut to commercial. Oh, <laughs> so, so disrespectful, man. Like, <laughs> I, any any other ring ceremony, I've never seen it go to commercial like that. No, never. Once it comes to us, it's all oh, moving along. I got 17 of these. Yeah. yeah I... <laughs> Most disrespectful thing, bro. I don't get it. Dude, and it was such a good shot too, right? Yeah. Everything looked great. And then it's just like, wait, where, where's it going? Like, I remember as I was watching, like, <laughs> are we cutting to a package right now? And then I right. see the commercial and I'm like, God <laughs> damn, that's fucking terrible. It is what it is, man. It, 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 that, that's, it, it's, I'll put it to you like this. If, if no one believed in a bias against certain teams, like that's apparent hmm. to me. Is apparent, but it is what it is. We ride. Banner 18 has been lifted on the 19th. This is a random side note. Probably has nothing to do with what actually transpired there. But what do you think about making a different experience for those that are in the arena live versus those that are getting on the broadcast? Do you think that could be playing a part of all this? Right? We saved this one for the fans. Yeah, um, that would that would be trash because you have Celtics fans like me who are not in Boston, let alone the TD garden. Right. Like we want to be able to partake and, and be a part of the, the experience. And when you cut it out like that, like that just messes it up for us, which then makes us not really care about the network that is on. Right. Like, come on now. That doesn't, it just doesn't make any sense. I agree. I was just thinking, like, that could be the only explanation. And even then, like, that's what we all are here for, ladies and right. gentlemen. I think there is a time and place for that, though. I think especially with live sports, um, I think it doesn't make sense to not air uh, right. what, you're sh what you're doing to the audience. Right. Uh, but at the same time, I feel like some of the things, like, for example, at the Sphere, where they had these different packages in between, like maybe maybe some of those things could get reserved for the fans only. Not how it not how it went, but we'll see in the future how that continues to go. The the ones that were there got free T-shirts. I didn't get a T-shirt. That's their experience. That's enough. <laughs> that's enough. That, that's all they need. <laughs> I like the way you're thinking, bro. You're not wrong. Obviously, it wasn't just the banner ceremony. We didn't just get the rings. We had a whole damn game out there. And if you ask the New York Knicks, 
they didn't even fucking know they had a whole game out there because it was a <laughs> one-sided ass whooping if I've ever seen one. Um, obviously being buoyed by the three-point shooting performance that somehow just shut down after you tied the record, right? We couldn't get past that hump. But how did you feel about the Celtics game one and the product out there on the floor? Hey, man, I think um, one of the things that was great to see with this is that the spacing that was there, the, the fluidity and the ball movement, and, and, and one exciting element to me is that Tatum's shot has improved, right? So that's one thing he worked on over the summer. And I think that it, it, we saw clips of it, uh, I think, over the last two weeks or something. But to actually see it, you know, in, in, a, in a regulation game, right? Like, it was nice to see how fast he got that shot off and how – accurate that perimeter shot is um so that that's that's something that i think is is great to see and then also of course without porzingis like we're not even at full form yet bro like that's that's the one thing that i think should really scare people is porzingis ain't even back yet so the spacing is only going to get better when he gets in but i loved how cornet filled in uh, uh some of the time and and of course horford um coming in is always going to be the, 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 he's always going to be that anchor for you. So he was never a question mark, but you love to see how Cornette was able to come in and, 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 and take some of that time and uh, do, do well as always. So I, I'm, I'm excited, bro. I'm excited. I think what, what they're going to be able to do this year is going to be special uh, as long as they, you know, stay focused on, on what they have to do and help mm-hmm. them. Yeah, Cornette always playing his role uh, yes, when it comes to l- being adored by the fans and what they love to see in Boston, right? He checks all those boxes. So shout out to yeah. Cornette. Um, I got to say, though, right, It was this is a one-sided game, so it's easy to, to focus on the positives for you guys. I think there are some alarm bells to be sounded off for the Knicks. Obviously, everyone is quick to overreact, so I'm not trying to do that. But at the end of the day, the product is the product, right? And they were not in this game uh, for the oh. majority of it. And um, I think that speaks once again to the competition. I think we're going to see a better version of this Knicks team as the, con- the season continues to go on. Yeah. But I think this game solidified it for me too. I think the best moments that the Knicks had here were when they were able to not only uh, obviously get things going on the offensive end, but when they were able to slow things down defensively and uh, put themselves in positions to really string together some stops, I thought that shined through even though they were getting their ass whooped. So um, I think as the the season continues, we're going to see that. I think the Knicks are still going to be that defense first identity team, despite uh, the big splash moves uh, to to bolster the offense. But I got to ask you, man, is the McCall Bridges discussion a warranted one as far as the hitch in his shot and how it was looking right? Seven for 13 is yeah. not a bad night at the office, but there is some visible differences there. Uh, yes. Anything that stood out to you? Yeah, um, it, it he didn't look comfortable. Like, and I, I don't understand what the change would be to, to the shot because his shot was beautiful prior to coming to the Knicks. So I don't see what um, what is expected to actually change uh, with his shot. Uh, as long as he gets back to shooting how he usually shoots, uh, he'll be fine. I, I, I will say, though, there was a moment where he was shooting poorly in the first half, and I was sitting there thinking, because I got him on a fantasy team. <laughs> I was sitting there thinking, ah, what can I get for him? <laughs> That that thought did cross my mind, but you know, of course, it's like you know, you gotta settle down. It's it's a long season, so you gotta make sure that you, you you're patient. Um, the first ten games will definitely kind of like tell you what to really expect from teams, anyway. So um, he'll be fine. He'll be fine. Yes, sir. The Knicks shall be fine as well, but. Uh, it's always fun to see uh, New York fans just co- completely go from we're winning the chip yesterday to today looking like they just got absolutely mugged. So uh, we got a lot to look forward to, though, with this season. And I think this was a good first slate. So what did you think about the Lakers obviously getting the win against the Timberwolves and what that 
new addition of the Wolves look like? Any thoughts on that secondary game? So I actually didn't get to watch it because I was <laughs> was falling asleep uh, during the first quarter. So I didn't get to watch the game at all. Um, but I did go watch some, some of the highlights. And I will say uh, I'm intrigued to see what takes place with this team. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm reserving judgment on J.J. Reddick as a coach. I think he, he had, he's a brilliant basketball mind anyway, so I think everything will be fine with them. I'm intrigued to see how far they can go because if he can take them, you know, what, maybe to the second round or whatever, that they have something to build on uh, uh, moving forward. Um, of course, you, you know, I, I, I did see Anthony Davis um, – kind of took a shot at, at Rudy Gobert with saying that you know, his performance was that AD's performance was the defensive player of the year type of performance. Um, so I'm intrigued to see how he holds up this year. Um, because if he does, I, I, I wouldn't be surprised to see them, you know, take a step forward. I'm not going to give a prediction on the Lakers uh, right now because I want to, and they, they always, for the last two to three years, they kind of like, they look really impressive in the first two months or so. And then there's that Josh Allen skid, right? But and they don't ever bounce back. They just keep skidding. <laughs> so that's the one thing I'm kind of waiting for. I want to, I think I want to reserve judgment on the Lakers at least until Thanksgiving. I want to give them at least a month or so to kind of like see what it is that comes about with them. Um, so I don't know. I'm, I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued. And it'll be, it'll be, it'll be interesting. Let me ask you this. Do you think we're going to see Bronny stay on the active roster or is he going to the G league this year? It's a great question. I think by the way, we got that highlight. Uh, I think he's going to the G league. I think yeah. this was all very <laughs> orchestrated, right? I think this was all very, uh, mindful as far as the way we rolled these things out. It was almost kind of like a performance, right? Like, right. and now at this point, we get yeah the father-son thing. And it's so <laughs> funny because uh, obviously Ken, uh, Ken Griffey's, the, the double Griffey's were there uh, in attendance. So I think that brings uh, a bigger eye on what the reality of this is because this ain't that, bro. This ain't this, that, <laughs> this, this ain't that <laughs> at all. This is two different um scenarios and i think yeah. this one particularly was uh in place to stroke a certain man's ego but it's okay after 22 years right you you, you can do whatever the fuck you want and i gotta yeah. say as well <laughs> they're riding this skid mark all the way to skid row because right. uh, we don't know right it's gonna it's gonna fall out at some point if the past is prologue but yeah. I will say, man, there were a couple of different sets that I saw that I'm like, man, this this doesn't look like the Lakers offense the last couple of years. And yes. I think that's a, a good place to be. But once again, how long does that veneer stay yeah. shining in L.A.? Yeah. Uh, yeah. We, we've got it. We got a lot to look forward to in that way. But as, of course, the talk centers around the way the NBA season's going to play out, it's only right that we have a discussion about what is going on in sixer land in philadelphia there's been a lot of talk one in particular that i'm excited to reference and talk to you about here a video between kg and paul pierce just sort of discussing and, and kg's pissed and rightfully so right um uh, the idea of joel Embiid refusing to play in back-to-backs and what that means for the future and i think the big quote here right which i want to get your thoughts on is this is the fucking job, right? This is not, I'm not asking you to do overtime, brother. Yes. I'm asking you to show up. So imagine, right? I show up to work on Monday and I'm like, hey man, Friday, I don't really know about that. Like I, I don't got time off, right? I don't right. have no PTO left, but <laughs> not gonna be able to do it. Let's figure something else out. Yeah, that's not gonna work out well for me. So I definitely yeah. feel KG on that one. Derek, I gotta ask. This is one of your rivals, right? So yeah. how does that make you feel in the first place? But also, what are your thoughts on Joel Embiid and this uh, ideology that only seems could exist in today's NBA? Um, as a Celtics fan, it makes me laugh because it's great to see this happen to the Sixers. You know, um, 
they they are a rival. Well, I don't know if you can call it a rivalry. Like Embiid himself doesn't call it a rivalry because we always beat them. So it doesn't it it, it it's not it's not really that. But yeah, as a Celtics fan, it's hilarious. Now, as a basketball fan, it 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 sucks, you know, because you want to be able to see someone with that talent out there on the floor as much as possible. Um, and to, I think even before the preseason, he came out and, and, and said that he wasn't playing back to backs or like right during the preseason, um, he wasn't playing back to backs. And I found it interesting that, that, you know, this knee injury came up during that time so it wasn't something that was even fully reported in terms of what happened because i think even like the philadelphia media is kind of like what is going on like why is he not playing um and i just saw before we recorded and before we started the recording that uh the nba is going to be launching an investigation into uh Embiid's, uh actual injury to see what warrants this i believe like you know not playing back to backs or not playing the preseason he's not playing the first week of the season like it 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 doesn't make sense his injury doesn't make sense to me if you're able to play play like and i think that's what what kg was was really talking about because you know if you want to sit out some practices or whatever cool but when it's game time you gotta you gotta be out there bro and I think that's the one thing, like, if you're full, if you're healthy, get out there, you know? And I think that kind of speaks to the mentality of, of not everyone in this generation, but a lot of stars or superstars in this generation that kind of want to be coddled instead of just going for it. And then the ones that go for it are the ones that get ridiculed the most. I don't, that's the thing I don't understand about, about, about this day and age, because you should be out there as much as possible. You know, of course, you don't want to hurt yourself. You don't want to do it to uh, to to the point where you're um, jeopardizing your health in any way, shape, or form. Because if you're actually hurt, you need to sit out. But when it comes to someone like like this, uh, Embiid's uh, caliber, come on, bro, come on. That does it. Just does, it doesn't make any sense, dude. And the strangest thing about this whole Embiid thing, in my opinion is the fact that I still feel like we have never seen what it what it means to be in peak shape for Joel Embiid. Yeah. And I think as a professional athlete, like that's a really weird conversation to have. I think yeah. you could argue the same about a lot of different greats, right? All-time greats. Um, but when you're doing stuff like this on top of what it seems like not actualizing your potential, um, it really does make you feel like this isn't your priority, right? Shout out to Victor Wembanyama. We had this discussion last week or, or the week before about how, you know, his perspective changed on, on the way a lot of people see the game. And it's no disrespect to Joel Embiid. I think he's such a talented athlete and a talented player. I think the reality of it is, though, the success he's had in his career mirrors what he's put into his career. And I think although he's gotten to good heights and heights where you could argue some other stars have not gotten to with their playoff runs. Um, it still always feels like we are left scratching the surface instead of getting a full idea of what that is. And when you're committing to doing this right outside of the season at the beginning of the season, and who knows how, how this develops as the season goes on, it, it just really makes you feel at least as a fan, like, man, do you really care? Are you interested in yeah. winning a title or going through this and what it means to go through this? Because it's like, man, like at the end of the day, <laughs> you can't be bothered to show up to do something that let's, let's be honest. Everyone here wishes they could do for a living. Oh, so yeah. it's, it's, it's a weird discussion because obviously do I think in my heart of hearts, if there was no reason for him to move this way, would he be? No, I think there has to be a reason for him to go about his career this way, especially now. 
But to me, it's just like, man, do what you need to do outside of uh, the sport so that this doesn't trickle into your legacy. Because at the end of the day, this is all his legacy is going to scream, regardless of if he makes it to a finals or if he makes it to a conference finals. It doesn't matter. Like, regardless of that stuff, if even if you don't win ever, I think a lot of guys are going to have a different legacy than Joel Embiid was just because of decisions like this. Let me ask you this. Do you think we have seen him uh, reach his peak? I don't. I don't, which is another strange discussion, right? He is not a young athlete, um, but not old either, uh, especially in today's NBA. Shout out LeBron. Uh, One of my favorite uh, tweets I saw today, somebody was like, oh, shit. Shout out my aunt. Like, she just got out of a 13-year coma. Someone quote tweeted, like, hey, tell LeBron's still out here doing it. <laughs> because, <laughs> hey, like, that's that's real shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? That would that means something to her. So who knows how far we can go and what primes look like in today's NBA. But, yeah, I, I think there's a lot that still needs to be determined about Joel Embiid, and you just want to see him put his best foot forward to find that out, right? Yeah, most definitely, most definitely. I, I I agree. I think there there could be more to his game, but I I think if you're if you're staying on this trajectory, though, this could be the peak. Like him winning an MVP was the peak, hmm. and then that'd be it. Because <clears throat> excuse me, if especially if he continues with this kind of uh, schedule, he will never be eligible for another uh, award. <laughs> <laughs> yeah like i don't see how you're going to be able to to do that so um just taking off back to backs automatically and then if you are actually injured at some point like that's going to be more time so the likelihood of winning him win, winning another mvp or whatever uh, award is, is is slim to none at this point if that's the, if that's the thing but yeah um they're not going to win anything philly at least the sixers they're not going to win anything uh, 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 with with the schedule being like this, because if Embiid is not out there, their seating is going to get messed up. Then if they mess around <laughs> and 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 face the, the the Celtics or 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 even the Knicks uh, in the first round, hey, what are you really going to do? <laughs> I just got to say, like, I don't know who the fuck is making these rosters, right? I know Daryl Morey was involved with this one. Yeah. Hey, getting somebody that's injury prone like Joel Embiid to tatum to tandem up with fucking Paul George, <laughs> Mr. Mr. Hold on my knee himself. Yeah. Uh we, we got some problems on the horizon for Philly, but I think amongst this same tone, right? This same note, I think we have seen someone who yeah. has reached their peak. And continues to deal with lingering issues like this. Kawhi Leonard has been announced that he will be missing weeks of the 2025 season. What that means, it's up to you and God to figure out. Because uh, I have no idea. There's nothing concrete about timetable here for what's going on. Another one of my favorite memes this week. It comes around every year, right? Um, that really well, well-cooked turkey leg that... He just shakes it, right? And all of it just falls right off. And yeah. it's like Kawhi, Kawhi's knees as the season's about to start. And it's like, damn, bro. Like, we've been here for what I feel like confirmed has to be four years in a row now, right? So what, what, what is going on here, Derek? Can you give me yeah. some clarity? No, I mean, I think, like you said, he's definitely hit his peak. Toronto, that was it. That was it, bro. Because there's no way with the roster that the Clippers had when he got to LA, there's no way that that roster could not advance in the playoffs. Like, you talking, I'm talking about like, they couldn't get to the Western Conference Finals or the Finals. That type of team, that, that's, that doesn't make any sense. So yeah, no, he's done, bro. He's done. And he honestly needs to go ahead and retire. Damn, hot take in a century. Nah, he needs to go, bro. <laughs> because, like, all you're doing, if, if I'm a team owner, actually, let me ask you this. If you're a team owner, right, and and Kawhi becomes a free agent, I forgot when his contract ends, but let's say at the end of the season he becomes a free agent. 
are you putting money in to his pocket to 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 sit on the on the bench? Hell yeah, one year, twenty two million. Let's <laughs> fucking do it. Come through. Show me. You gonna have to show me, bro. I like that's gotta be, if not vet minimum, that's gotta be close to vet minimum. I like it can't that's be more be, than a year. It can't. That's got If it's gonna be more than a year, it's gotta be about two to three with at like three to five per. Like it can't be anything more than that. Somebody Why, will like, pay him twenty five. I promise huh? you that somebody will, regardless of all this shit. It's got. It's got. It's got to be spread out. If you're gonna be smart, it's gotta be spread out because there's there's no way you can pay that man. You can justify paying that man superstar price for a Ben Simmons schedule. It don't work like that, bro. It don't work like that, dude. And and when he's out there, he's not Ben Simmons level, right? He's no. a, he's an all star. He is. But it's Wait, just you gonna pay for you gonna pay for a part time all star, and, and and not even a part time. Partial part time, <laughs> conditional partial. So it becomes a mouthful, right? Yeah. Are you actually gonna want to pay for that? Because that's what that's what that's what the Clippers are paying. Mm-hmm. And that's what they chose to pay as that's well. They, bro, they chose to pay Kawhi Leonard over Paul George. Now I ain't gonna lie, you're cooked either way. <laughs> <laughs> Legend. You can't just you can't just skate by that, Derek. Damn. <laughs> but which one would you prefer to pay? The one that's actually out there a little more, or the one that's that's barely out there, bro? How many games has, has Kawhi played in the season since he's been in LA? That's a great question. I wouldn't gather. I wouldn't guess more than forty eight. I can't. I can't. I can't say it's even been close to a five hundred mark. Hmm. Yeah. Paul George would have been a better, a better bet. Better cornerstone, right? To try to build yeah. a franchise around. Yeah. Lord knows. I feel bad for Kawhi. I think the talent is always going to be the story, right? I think that's going to yeah. be the 30-30. Uh, once we get down the line, that's going to be the story, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, but we hope, as all things do, the history doesn't repeat itself and Joel Embiid doesn't become Kawhi Leonard number two because it is pretty solidified at this point that he is that guy and there's no disrespect like I think everyone is uh 100% beholden of of his all-star qualities when he's playing like everyone talks about yeah. the legend that is Kawhi Leonard but you got to be out there in order uh to to wow anybody and good luck trying to get him to do that man so crazy we'll move, before we move on though because I, I just thought about this would if Ben Simmons his contract ends this year, right? And then, and he came out and talked about how he found he found it disrespectful that people were saying that he was stealing money from these teams. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Can you see him getting another contract after the season's over? Hold on, wait. Uh, did you are, are you talking about Kawhi or are you talking about Ben Simmons? Ben Simmons. I'm talking. About ben. <laughs> Holy yeah, I'm shit! I'm sorry. I'm talking about Ben Simmons. Yes. Yes. Can you see him getting a contract? And if you if you can, what kind of contract are you paying Ben Simmons at this point in his career? I think that's a loaded question. I think right. that answer to it is going to come within the next couple of weeks. Yeah. I would say coming into this year, no, uh, yeah. just based on what we've seen. But the allure of uh, off-season Ben Simmons and what comes with it uh, has struck us the last three seasons, right? So No, it hasn't. <laughs> I'm not falling for that trick every year, bro. The, the last time I fell for that was when he was in Philly. And it was like when he was coming off some injury. I forgot what happened. But off-season video of him shooting and, and going, you know, hitting the uh, uh, like a, a perimeter shot or whatever. I was like, oh, okay. He can actually add this. All right, cool. Game time comes. The man don't add it. He don't care about hitting a, a, a perimeter shot. Hmm. You know what I'm saying, and and I don't know what kind of contract he can get after this one exp- expires, but I wouldn't feel comfortable paying him anything top dollar. Yeah, me neither. Me talking neither. about that minimum, then yeah, you're talking about like like a potential person that that can be like your 15th guy or whatever that can actually move up to maybe 11 or 10. Like okay, I, like I'd pay for that. 
I ain't paying for anything else than that. How could you? I think I think it's a very realistic stance to have. Yeah. I think defensively, he's always gonna have that effort if he's healthy. The question mm-hmm. is, once again, that that big fucking H word, and yeah. it gets bigger every fucking year. So yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't feel confident, and I'm sure everyone is on the same camp. But, hey, that's the way this injury bug goes, right? You never know who's going to struck. You never know how long, how extended, how this all adds up in the grand scheme of things. So that's a that's a big X factor in sports in general, and you hate to see guys get their, their careers plagued by it. But the reality is the reality, and you got to call it out when you see it. So I agree. Yeah. It's but it's only right that we get on to this wide world of the NFL, ladies and gentlemen, because we've got headlines. We've got a lot to talk about. And I am fed up, right, off the top, right? Fuck all the pleasant trees, right? (laughs) How the fuck, like, this is the ultimate moment, right, where we get that meme. It's like, he can't keep getting away with this. Because how the fuck did the Buffalo Bills allow the Xavier Worthy situation to play out, right? Mm -hmm. And now... The Tennessee Titans Mm -hmm. in that same conference are like, you know what? I got you. All I need is a little fifth. You feel me? Nothing too crazy. I think they could have gotten a better deal from a different team. Um, But somehow everyone just continues to be in bed with the Kansas City Chiefs. I'm tired of it. They are villains. And I hate it because I love me some Pat Mahomes, right? I am the Pat Mahomes defender. But at yeah. the same time, y'all are all forcing me to hate this man because yeah. of all the stuff that comes around this organization. And the fact that teams are still willing to make this team better is fucking crazy to me. Is this a hot take, Derek? What the fuck is going on in the National Football League? No, because like that was what I thought <laughs> when I saw the, the news. Like, they got the When I saw you posted, I didn't believe it. I saw it first on the OTS page, and I was like, nah, there's no way. And I know you don't post fake shit, but I'm like, yeah. there's no way that's real. Yeah. I, I that's that's how I felt too, because it's like there's no way. And I'm like, it it doesn't make any sense because and now you know what? I think the league needs to launch two investigations. Okay. <laughs> One into the into the Chiefs for obvious reasons. But secondly, they need to launch an investigation for the Titans because the deals that they're making make no sense to me. They yeah, make shout no out the other deal too. I, I didn't even get a chance to throw it in here, but uh, swapping LBs with the, with the Seahawks and then giving them a pick too. It's just like, what the fuck is going? What is going? Uh, who is actually running this team, bro? Like, so franchise mode, and and you're like throwing them players so you could get better yeah. ass and you're like this shouldn't work but hey it yeah. worked <laughs> you let malik willis walk you let derrick henry walk you traded aj Nothing. brown like now you trade d hop to the chiefs for a bag of chips and expired chips too it ain't even like they're fresh like I, I just I don't know, man. I don't I don't get it. I, I for the life of me, I don't get it. So here's the thing: there should be no excuses for the Chiefs. There's no acceptable excuse for them. There's none. Like you see, all the moves they made this this off season going into the season, when, where it came to wide receivers, right? Like hey, Hollywood Brown, he's out. You got Xavier Worthy. Um, I forgot the other move that they made, but like now you get D Hop, and it's like, what are the excuses? Like, what would be if they if they don't make it to the AFC Championship? What's the actual excuse at this point? It would have to be some kind of injury, right? Like, it it, yeah. it wouldn't just happen just because. I think that'll be the narrative, like it. Honestly, with the way they're playing now, they're not good, and they and they're undefeated. Like they they're uh, not humming yeah. yet, yeah. Um, and they're undefeated. So yeah, man, they oh. Isaiah uh, Pacheco was the other injury. Yes, Isaiah Pacheco. Yeah, so shout out Carson Steele. Right, I remember that uh, fucking waiver wire craze that was uh, oh. Carson Steele. Hilarious yeah. debate. It was always uh, Mr. Hunt. But anyway, um, 
yeah, fuck this team, right? Like, I want to like, I want to yeah. like you guys, but fuck this. Like, yeah. you cannot root for this team if you are at any all. other fan of any other team. No, at you all. Can't root and, for and, their success, period. And to be honest, the cherry on top, Taylor Swift is associated. Like, she is now there, and, and we're seeing her every single game. I can't watch a Chiefs game this year, bro. Like, mm-hmm. I want to watch Chiefs, game, Chiefs games, but I can't because I am tired of them cutting to her. Milking so it. that's the, that's the cherry on top, bro. Mm-hmm. Every Like, all of this, like, together, I just I can't do it. I just can't do it. I don't blame you. I think if there's anything the NFL has proven to love, it's that top tier milk, right? That top tier, two <laughs> percent fat. You know what I'm saying? That top tier. Organic. And God damn it, Kansas City's got it on all fronts, right? Yeah. Fuck this team. Fuck the Titans too, because y'all are trash and y'all are even worse now. So this is full tank mode. Oh, and to make it things worse, they're paying half his salary. That's fuck it. Yeah, that's nuts to me. That is nuts to me. You sign the man and you're like, hey, go play with somebody else. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry we burdened you. <laughs> Fucking crazy. Bro, I don't I don't get it, but hey, it is what it is. We're here. As far as the actual on football transaction, right? Yeah. I think this is a huge acquisition for the Chiefs. I think what they've lacked is what he brings. I still think he is not the same guy he once was like i'm i'm firm in that but he pat mahomes ain't no will levis right we're we're gonna get this guy the ball and i won't be surprised if he's super productive but i don't expect him to be their wide receiver one like i feel like honestly if there's any guy i'm circling right now and this is obviously their current situation if everyone's healthy i'm going rasheed rice but with their current situation I still think it's Juju. And I know that sounds crazy, right? When this guy could barely get signed uh, uh, before he came over. But I just think the familiarity with the offense, the way he's been the number one option when he's been out there, I know it's been one game, but I I still feel like he is their wide receiver one. But when you've got all these other guys on top of it, uh, just a fucking cacophony of riches. I hate you guys. Fuck fuck you guys. (laughs) I, I agree. (laughs) <laughs> well, next up, we move on to another team that is looking to make another move. It has been announced because of their involvement in this Kansas City sweepstakes that the Rams are seeking at least a second round pick for Cooper Cup in a trade. Now, I got to ask you right off the top, Derek, is this the steepest ax- asking price we've ever seen in trade rumors for a white wide receiver. I got to ask you, Derek. Oh. I got to ask you. Because <laughs> didn't they not even get this for A.J. Brown? Like what? I don't think they even got this for A.J. Brown, bro. I, I, I got to look back at that trade, but I, I don't think they got a second round pick. At least, it has to be. Mm-hmm. Off top, it has to be, at least for a white receiver. <laughs> yeah. Bro, first and second round picks are like sacred in the NFL. Yeah. Those don't get traded for shit. Good luck to the Rams trying to I get why that's that'll be your asking price at first. Yeah. I think you wanna you you like where you're at with your receivers, right? You 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 fell upon a great one in Puka, but now it's like we gotta get X times better for giving up on him, which I get. But I think also too, there is a space where this team needs to figure out what they're going to do. I think, do you bottom out? Do you try to be one of those worst teams in the league? Hell, we might even have them shopping Matt Stafford in a few, if that's the case. I won't be surprised if we see that either. But at this point, if these rumors are getting out there, it's clear they're trending towards this route more than the other. Um, We've seen them do a one-year retool rebuild. So I, I know if anyone's equipped to do it, it'll be them. But in my opinion, I just still feel like this is a weird move. Like, I think being willing to shop this guy, I mean, he's injured, first of all, right? So asking for that, like, let's be real here. If this was Dynasty, right, and and I'm doing this, you'll be like, hey, what the fuck are you doing? Like, the timing is everything. You can't put a guy on the block (laughs) after he's injured, like right after, too. Like, oh, yeah, Yeah. let's do this. Uh, It definitely diminishes the value, but then you're setting the asking price that high as well. It's like, 
it's clear that you acknowledge what this guy means to your franchise and that's what yeah. you want in return. Yeah. But I don't see anyone giving them this. Do you? I think it mainly depends on his, on his contract. They also um, said they will be taking a brunt of that as well. Right. So yeah, that helps. So, I, here's the reason why I can't see them, anyone giving him a second round pick. Because the man's been injured frequently. Now, when he's out there and he's balling, like the, the dude's balling, like it ain't, it ain't close. I would, I would push and 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 try at least to do a third round pick. At least, like if you're talking about a team that needs a wide receiver one or two, this would make sense. You know what I'm saying? Um, like, I don't know why I keep coming back to them, but the Steelers, for example, I, I could possibly see them going for, for cup. I could see it. Um, especially with Mr. Unlimited, <laughs> Unlimited at the helm. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I could see that. I could see that. Um, I, I just, I don't know though. I don't know. Like it has to be. I, I know no one's gonna give up a second round pick though. Like that. That's not for someone that that's injured as much as he is. Um, you almost feel uncomfortable drafting him in fantasy because mm -hmm. of the possibilities of him not being available, right? Yep. Like I know. I, I think there were a couple of leagues I, I I skipped out when I could have gotten him. I have him in one league, but um, yeah, I like. It's it's I, I don't know if someone if someone try to trade you for him a trade ask you to trade a second round pick for Cooper Cup right now in fantasy are you doing it now here's why this is a different discussion right because yeah. fantasy football only takes into account offense at least the ones I'm a part of right they have IDP leagues I've never been a part I'm not interested I love IDPs right? oh really really yeah. yeah. That's a conversation we should have on another day, right? What what it means to make an IDP league. But yes. just me personally, I think a second rounder is is steep, bro. It's steep. It's but steep. in this year's draft, I wouldn't mind it. Next year's draft, not gonna not have it in period. Like yeah. this year, though, I don't know. It's a little different. But yeah. that's considering that I'm only drafting offense. Right. If I was an NFL team, hell no. Like yes. it's gonna have to be a third if i'm feeling good about where we're at like right and that's a conditional third so it's like man right yeah it's a lot i just gotta say shout out to cooper cup for actively looking like does anyone that you saw that was not an nfl player like it is my guy cooper cup like if anything mm -hmm. i've seen a lot of his archetypes walking the streets of pa and begging for money no disrespect right no disrespect <laughs> But if there's ever been anyone that looks a little like a fiend, shout out Delonte West, it's my guy Cooper Cup. But with all that being said, it's only right that we jump right into our discussion for all things week number eight in the NFL. Derek, we've got a standings update, ladies and gentlemen. And last week, Derek had himself a winning week. God damn it. He went 11 and 4 while I went 10 and 5, bringing our total overall record to. Hurrah, I wish I could get a little drum roll right here. We've got Derek sitting at 59 wins, 44 losses, while I am sitting at 61 wins, 42 losses. Really excited to see, right, how this all continues to play out. But Shortening the gap was yeah. Derek this week, so you love to see it. Hopefully, that does not continue this week. But <laughs> we start right here at Thursday night about with the team we were just talking about. I think this is a great bounce back situation for the Vikings. Now, you could argue this is also a little bit of a trap game, right? You just had a tough game, and now you're turning around on the short week to face this Rams team on the road. Coming off of a win, not an easy place um, to play if you consider that half your team, half of the audience isn't rooting for you too, right? So 
actually, the, the Vikings might be in a good spot with the half yeah. a home game here. Um, I think ultimately, though, obviously the Vikings coming off their first L, they've got a lot to play for here. I think the Rams are trending towards trying to tank. So all of these things make me feel very confident about the Vikings. I think even if those factors weren't in play and we got this game two weeks ago, I still would have picked the Vikings. Um, But this screams trap game. Like, I won't be surprised if they end up losing here. Yeah. um, I'm going to go with the Vikings as well, just because I can feel a little more confident in them. But Thursday night games are just weird, bro. (laughs) Like, on paper, at least what's being put out there right now as of, you know, as of, as of week seven going into week eight, I would assume the Vikings should win this game. I'll just put it like that. And you know what they say about assumptions, right? And who they make asses out of, I don't know, but. Yeah. <laughs> Thursday night games are just weird. So, yeah, I'm going to go with the Vikings, but I'm not, I'm not, I'm not totally confident. Well, thankfully, we're not going to have this issue with the first game with a one o'clock window. We've got the Packers on the road against the London Jaguars. But this time, for some reason, we're in we're in Florida. Why? why how the fuck we got to Jacksonville? Like they, we're supposed to be in London, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this is a, a great opportunity for the Packers to get another win. I just got to say, man, the Jaguars sneaky been looking good, right? Like, I don't want to believe in it. I don't. Yeah. But I think this may be the point in the season where they're starting to figure some things out. Obviously, coming off of a a win against a terrible team is a good place to be. But even in the losses prior to that, I think they've been getting some momentum towards the right direction. Nowhere near confident enough in that, though, to pick against the Packers here. I think the Packers got a lot going for them offensively and defensively, and they're going to be a tough team to beat if you are on your P's and Q's. And we know the Jags aren't, so give me the pack. Yeah, uh, give me the Packers as well. I, I can't be comfortable with the Jaguars right now. Let's get to pick them, so. Yeah, easy games we've got this week, ladies and gentlemen. Don't be surprised yeah. if we're agreeing a lot. Next up. On this one o'clock slate, we have two poverty, I mean, two struggling franchises right now, but some doing better than, than the others. We've got the Arizona Cardinals on the road in beautiful Miami, going up against the Dolphins without Tua, of course, at this point. <laughs> um, oh, no, I think he's playing, bro. You're lying. No. Don't do this to me, Derek. I saw Tyreek Hill say he's back. Like, oh my god, talking about fan- fantasy and 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 saying start him. That would be the only reason why he would say that. And I also saw that he said explicitly that he is not going to be wearing a guardian cap out there. So isn't that wild? Yeah, man, this all feels wrong, right? This feels like when you're a bartender and you know this guy is going to his car right now. Like, you know he's going to the car. But am I going to call, right? Do I want him to not be back here next week? I don't know. <laughs> I might look the other way, but fuck, man. This is this does not feel good. It leaves a bad taste in my mouth, regardless of whatever. Um, if the Dolphins could go out there and look like the Dolphins, they probably should win this game. I think the Cardinals have a hard time against spread offenses, and I think the yeah. Dolphins are the best in the league at that when they are humming. Damn it, Derek, I was so confident in picking the Cardinals here, but you know what? I'm going to fucking do it. Give me the return of Mr. Tua Tunga Vailoa. Give me the Cardinals to win this one easy. <laughs> Give me the Dolphins, bro. I think if two is back, um, Tyreek eats. So how long that lasts, that's a different question. That's another discussion. But if it gets through this game. <laughs> so bad. I, <laughs> so bad. If, if he gets through this game, I'm taking the Dolphins on this one. And I'll sell high on Tyreek Hill. Hey, that's a good place to be, right? Do it quick. Yeah. Get him out of there. 
Yeah. <laughs> I'm getting I'm getting a first or second round pick. Yeah, you're getting something. You're getting something. I'm leaving here with something. Shout out. <laughs> Next up, we've got a big divisional game, right? That's what these are, right? Yes. They're yes. big right? yeah. for the NFL. <laughs> we've got the Jets on the road facing off against the juggernaut that is the New England Patriots being led by Drake May. 500 yards, Drake May. Don't sleep. We throwing dots, baby. You know, this is this is a poverty game uh, yes. if we've ever seen one. But at least they're going to care a little bit more because it's a divisional one. Yeah. So, Derek, take us to the promised land, man. Who you got? I'm going I'm going to go ahead and go with the Jets on this one. Um, I okay. can't confidently take the Patriots right now. Um, but I did see that Aaron Rodgers is dealing with the hamstring, I believe. Um, so not sure how much that's going to limit him. Um, but – you have Devontae Adams and Wilson out there. You should be able to throw to someone, like whoever is playing out there. I don't even know who's the backup for the Jets. That's a good question. I think uh, that's a name we should know. I think it's Tyrod Taylor, if I'm not mistaken. Tyrod Taylor, okay, yeah. Um, well, yeah. I didn't even look that up though, so let me check. Let okay. me check. <laughs> he should be serviceable if that's pop if that if that's him. Um but yeah, over the over the Patriots, I, I think I think it'll be a close game though. I'll give it. A, I, I'll say it'll be a close game, maybe a field goal. Wow, look at that! I like it. Yeah, I low key was considering the Patriots here just because of uh, the phenomena that is Drake May and the excitement that comes with them. Um, but yeah, man, there's just too many pieces of a uh, team that the Jets have, even though they're not a good team. Yeah. Uh, they got a lot more pieces than the Patriots, even if Aaron Rodgers isn't playing. So I agree. I'll take the Jets as well, but I'm not happy about it, right? Like, this this sucks. Like, we're four games in. This is fucking bad. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> fuck it. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Next up, baby, we got my Ravens. Five and two. Listen, that video. Did you see the video of the Bucks fan that we converted? Did you see that? No, I thought you were about to talk about the James Winston video. Oh no. yeah, I would I would love to talk about that as well. But no, there was a there was a Bucks fan at the game, right, pumped up, and this was after we came back, right, because we were down ten nothing in the first quarter, mm-hmm. and we're already up at this point. And he looks to the side, right, and he's like, "The Baltimore Ravens are the best team in the NFL," <laughs> <laughs> and that was my favorite moment from the yeah. game yesterday because. I was getting messages, right? My friends, my biggest haters, right? Shout out, shout yeah. out my god brother who's a Steelers fan. Just hitting me up casually. Oh, y'all gonna let Baker do this shit to you? And then immediately I'm like, this is my fault. Like as it was yeah. happening, I'm like, I've manifested this <laughs> in more ways than I'm willing to admit. Yeah. But I knew, right? I knew our 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 offense would eventually figure itself out. And then we had ourselves a game after that. Uh, you love to see Derrick Henry eating, even when he's on his way to having a bad game, uh, yeah. just finds that one breakaway moment to make it a great game. And then, of course, Lamar Jackson, five touchdowns, spreading the wealth. We got Mark Andrews, two tutties. Shout out Justice okay. Hill. He, he was down there somewhere, right? Like, we figured out a lot this week offensively. I think defensively, I didn't really like how we looked, especially all things considered. Got to say prayers up to both Chris Godwin and Mike Evans, both suffering injuries during this game, which really changed the complexion of the game, if you ask me. I think without injuries, we might have lost this game. Like, we were getting our ass cooked um, in the first quarter, and I think we were on our way to a lot more of that. But um, ultimately, how does that translate to this game? <laughs> we faced we, we faced a great team last week, and <laughs> we whipped that ass, boy. <laughs> this is going to be bad, right? Shout out to, well, got to also mention, I'll let you go a little bit deeper into that video and what it meant to you. But I just love Jameis Winston as a human being, right? He is also without, not without criticism, not without fault. Um, but just what he stands for as a man, I think is very commendable. And I loved every second of that. But at the same time, <laughs> a little uh, tone deaf, right? With some of the things that you're saying right. there. Especially when it's like, oh, you know, he, he hasn't even faced that. And I'm like, holy shit, what? Yeah. <laughs> you said what? <laughs> so, hey, with all due respect, 
I love me some Jameis Winston. I, I'm excited to see him ball here because I think he will have at least a couple of uh, flashy moments. But yeah. I think this is going to be a pretty bad beatdown for my Ravens. Shout out Nick Chubb making a successful recovery and return as well. Got a touchdown in his debut. I don't think it's going to be as good as it was in his debut. And don't get don't let the, the, the numbers fool you. He got a touchdown. But he had like 22 yards, right? We're still struggling out here. This, yeah, that's yeah. a bad injury to come back from. But shout out to him for making it back. Give me my Ravens big, right? Big. There's no way we lose this one. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm choosing the Ravens as well. Just get that out of the way. Uh, but for that video, I think as well, I thought, you know, yeah, great teammate to have his back like that. Very tone deaf, though. I, I, I definitely agree with you on that one. Um, I don't know that he really needed to say anything. <laughs> Just ball out, bro. Just go out and play ball. Like, you know, I didn't, I didn't think that the, <clears throat> the change at QB would be uh, this way, but I did believe that Jameis Winston was going to be starting eventually this year. Um, so I, I just... That part of it I'm not surprised by, but I it did it, it it's anytime you see somebody, you know, go down with an injury like that, it does suck to see that. Um but you know we'll see what happens with his future. I I I don't know his contract right now in terms of the uh, amount of years, but I, I I would venture to say that that's pretty much I, I can't see this being a thing for him. Like, even if he comes back next year, <clears throat> I think they said that he's trying to do the whole Aaron Rodgers thing, um, whatever that is. And I was going to say, what the fuck is that? I don't, yeah. <laughs> Ayahuasca? Is that what yeah, he's trying right. to do? Ayahuasca? He's, he's trying to do it all, I guess. So um, I can't see him coming back and, and, and taking that starter position in Cleveland which then I can't see it being a thing where he gets signed anywhere else. I think this is going to be it for him. I couldn't agree with that more, but I got to ask you one question before we get out of here, because we're going to yeah. get out of here quick. Trust yeah. me. I promise. I'm sorry. It's been long enough already. Guys. Yeah. yeah. But I got to ask you, have you ever seen that video of Clay Thompson getting introduced right after he came back from his injury? Yeah. Like, well, he's back. Right. <laughs> yeah. My favorite meme of this week was when Deshaun Watson shows up at his re first rehab appointment <laughs> and all you see is that clip of Clay. Ah, legends. Stuff of legends. You hate to see terrible things <laughs> made into jokes, but damn it, this one laid itself up. Next up, <laughs> we move on to another bird that's flying high. We've got the Philadelphia Eagles coming off of an absolute curb stomping of the Jersey Giants on the road against the Pussycats, the Cincinnati Bengals. Derek, you already know I'm throwing to you first, so I like that you're getting your sips in. You're getting prepared because you know what's coming. I need to know where's the morale at, right? Obviously, a much-needed big win against that team specifically, but now what does it mean for the rest of your future this season and – are you excited again? What, how are you feeling? You've seen that 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 uh, that helmet ain't been spinning for weeks, bro. I, like you're supposed to do that against the Giants, and to be honest, they were supposed to do more. <laughs> to me, they were supposed to do more. Um, I, I I'm I, I kind of take that win. I, I I love it. I love, you know, what Saquon was able to do. I love what, what Jalen Hurts and Agent Brown were able to do as well. Um, however, I take it with a grain of salt. I need to see it against a team that is better, <laughs> that actually has a QB, that actually has, you know, well, I mean, they Giants have a receiver, but they, you're not helping them at all. Um, I, like, I need to see it against another team. Um, I think, yeah, it's a, it's, it's a horrible team, but as well, I think that it's a building block. Um, 
I just God, I just need Sirianni gone, bro. I, I can't take any more of this guy, man. I like I'm choosing the Eagles here, but and I'll actually be in Philly this weekend. That that that's a a, a, a thing too. But you know, prayerfully they 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 get everything together and 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 just build on what they did last week and actually play. Um, Sirianni came out this week and said that we are our identity is not run first. It is based on the opponent. And I cannot begin to tell you how much I hate that. <laughs> not begin to tell you how much I hate that. Because I agree a lot of your game planning does it is centered on who your your opponent is. However, you need to run the ball, bro. Like that's you, what we do. We paid for this. Like you we ain't spent this much money on a running back in a long time. You gonna sit here and tell me you're not gonna run the guy? What like I, I just he he's thinking too much, bro. I, I like as an overthinker, he's overthinking this. <laughs> he's doing too much, bro. He's doing way too much. Just just keep it simple, stupid. Run the ball, open up the passing game, you're good. Defense is good, but like the defense even got better. The defense got better. So yeah, come on. Yeah, we got the whitest secondary in the league between the league, Blankenship bro. and the Cooper DeGene. It's getting real. Thank it's getting you. real uh, Philly pr- uh, fanatic, if you yeah. ask me. <laughs> and killing it out there. So come on. Just, just, just keep it simple, stupid. Run the ball. Open the game up for everybody else. This is it's easy. So I would love this. That's what I would love to see in this game. I would love to see them do more of that because – if they can replicate what they did last week in this game, then moving forward, you have something to build on right there. Yeah, that that's that's cool. But if not, then it's just a little bit. It's just it's just delaying the inevitable. So true. It's been great to hear your perspective. But now we have a game. We got a game to discuss, Derek. Yeah. We've got the Cincinnati Bengals coming in hot off of two straight wins against some uh, pretty average competition, but. Looking to continue that momentum here against the Eagles. This is a big game for the Bengals, all things considered. I think even though you guys are on the road here, though, I'm still feeling pretty confident in picking you guys. I think it's really going to come down, to though, to you guys' offense. I think their defense has proven to be getting better, but also to be their real Achilles heel right now. And I think this is going to be the perfect Let's figure out what our parameters game is for you guys, right? Because yeah. your defense is going to show up, but it ain't going to have an easy time, right? Like, I think it's kind of expected that these this team is going to score, right, regardless of how good your defense is. So now we got to put up points on the board to keep up, right? So I think this was a really good test. Obviously, nobody plans this shit out, but pretty good test for what you the questions you guys need to get answered here. I'm going to pick you guys to, to pass that test but not with flying colors. I think this is going to be a tough game, and I think the Bengals are better than their record despite looking absolutely abysmal earlier on in the season, obviously pulling some things together now. But this is going to be a tough one. But uh, I think the Eagles have shown they can weather some storms in a way the Bengals haven't. Give me the Eagles. Yes, sir. Give me the Eagles as well. We are keeping it simple, stupid. Next up, <laughs> it's only right we move on to a divisional matchup. We've got the second edition of Colts versus Texans. Kind of crazy that you get both of these divisional games before the halfway point of the season, but damn it, we're here. I'm going to gladly throw it to you by saying that obviously – Young AR, right? The little Draco, little little Anthony Richardson, uh, still needs to prove that he is an AR, right? Still needs to prove that he is that guy. But I think coming off of an injury, you like to see the way things are progressing. But it's very obvious that he is still not at a hundred percent. And I think starting a QB that isn't at a hundred percent against a team like this is a tough spot to be in, regardless of how the history is between you guys. I think obviously both of these teams are going to show up big time for this game, yeah. but 
I like the Texans here at home, Derek. Yeah, give me the Texans as well, bro. I mean, I'm I'm not confident in the Colts right now. Uh, and and they did also just sign Devin White. We'll see if they play him, but they did just play uh, did uh, just sign Devin the Texans. White. Yes. Wow, I did not hear about that. That's yes, a great move. Today, earlier today or, or yesterday, uh, but they did sign him. So um, I'm looking forward to seeing, you know, one, if he even plays, but two, I'm looking forward to seeing how they kind of build on, on what they have going on anyway. So I, 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 like, I like the Texans. It's just as simple as that. Super solid. Next up, take the reins, Derek. Jesus, take the wheel. We've got the Titans. Yeah. <laughs> On the road against Detroit and the Lions, the well-oiled Lions coming off of a big win, a big divisional win against the Vikings. Yeah. How you feeling about this one, Derek? I know it's a tough matchup. Bro, the Titans are about to get mauled. Like, <laughs> we might actually Hey, hey, hey wait, 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 wait. Dwayne, just turn the shit off now. I, I'm yeah, sorry. Turn it off. I ain't trying to do this to you, but yeah. fuck. God <laughs> did it to you. But continue. Sorry. Yeah. This, I wouldn't be surprised if this is the first time we actually saw a negative score in this game. Uh, <laughs> the Titans ain't going to do anything in this game, bro. Lions are, Lions are, are, are you know, hit, hitting their stride. So, you know, there's no way they do anything in this game but win. The, 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 Lions can, the only way the Lions lose this game is if they actually don't show up. And even then, like, it's a very possible – uh, a thing that they could still win a game by not playing. So wow. uh, give me give me the lines on this one. Man. <laughs> you don't even gotta show up. Nah. Bro, Derek, <laughs> I just had an idea, right? Can we make this meme happen like between you and I? I just had a meme idea, right? Okay. You know the the 50 cent iconic meme, right? Where he's like, what he said fuck me for? Yeah. I need I need a a, a clip of Mason Rudolph, right? Being yeah. announced as a starter and immediately Whoa, what he said fuck me for because li- literally <laughs> well, why 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 are you doing this to me yeah uh, obviously all jokes aside i'm pretty sure he's excited to get the opportunity to play and he didn't look half bad in the first couple of games he's had but damn this team is in poverty no matter what you say it's poverty and then you're facing arguably the best hottest team in the league yeah yeah this is going to be a mauling uh give yeah. me the lions by fitty how about that fitty <laughs> It would not shock me. Yeah. <laughs> I don't I'm even doing know if I'm going to get a field goal on this one, bro. <laughs> Damn, bro. <laughs> Where's Waluigi when you need him, guys? Right, right. <laughs> well, just like that, we move on to what I think is a pretty intriguing game. We've got the Falcons on the road. Kirko Chains is making an appearance. Mm. He is going up against Baker Mayfield and those Bucks. Obviously, big injuries that I mentioned earlier, which need to be taken into account here. Obviously, I think their wide receiver one right now is a man named Sterling Shepard. But I got to ask you, Derek, who you got? The Falcons on the road or the Bucks at home? I'm I'm going to go the Falcons on this one. Uh, if you don't have uh, Evans or Godwin out there, I think it's going to be a little hard for them to do what they normally would do in this game, and and it's not even a knock against Baker Mayfield. I just I don't see them. I don't I don't know how he's going to be able to do extremely well with that defensive line coming at him like that I, without any weapon that you're used to being open. So yeah, give me give me the Falcons on this one. Um, just because, yeah, this, yeah, this ain't going I don't, I don't, I don't like it for, for Baker too much. This, this game has been hard on my mental. Now hear yeah. me out. I think the Falcons definitely don't get enough credit as they deserve defensively. Yeah. But I think they also at the same time are super inconsistent on offense, uh, which makes this a very strange situation for me. I think the Bucs are still good to put up a good amount of points regardless of those injuries, which is kind of crazy to say. I love their three headed monster at running back Uh, keeps getting better every year, every every game, despite uh, I'm sure the headache it's giving fantasy managers. Yes. 
yeah, man, I don't know what to do here. Like, I'm I'm gonna fuck it, right? Sometimes you gotta flip the coin. Give me the Bucks at home. I think this is a tough game for both teams, but I think ultimately the Falcons still, in my opinion, are struggling to find their true identity, right? Yeah. You have one of the best running backs in the league. You've got some of the biggest, flashiest weapons acquired this offseason, and somehow you're not an offensive team, but you're not a defensive team either, right? Like yeah. some games you're putting up 30, some games you're putting up 13. Like it is strange yeah. out there in Atlanta, and that's why I'm not confident in picking them. So fuck it. Give me the bucks at home, but I don't like it, right? I'm not happy about it, <laughs> but sometimes you got to do what you got to do next up we move on to that four o'clock window we've got the saints on the road against jim harbaugh and them charges so we got we got a sneaky good game on our hands um if the saints weren't as banged up as they are i think this would be a better game yeah i'm gonna take us out of our misery though right because this is a real bottom of the barrel hold on you you can still play kind of situation <laughs> Give me the Chargers here by a field goal. I think this game is going to be a sludge fest, and I think it's going to be who is less injured that's going to win this game. And fortunately for the Chargers, they have that title. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to go with the Chargers as well. There's just less injuries over on that side right now. Um, yeah, if, if honestly the Saints were full, full of health, um, this would be a significantly better game. But – yeah, give me the charges with this one. I I I, I can trust them a little more in this in this game. Derek, I gotta say, this is the best game we got this week. <laughs> yeah. Can you believe that? Because this ain't a great game either. We got the know. Bills <laughs> on the road against the Seahawks in this four o'clock window. Yeah. Hey, at least this one's gonna be high scoring, right? At least this one's gonna be exciting. I'll let you take the the lead on this one though, Derek. How you feel about these two very inconsistent franchises? Yeah, um, I'm going to go with the Bills on this one. Um, I believe Metcalf has an injury, if I'm not mistaken. Um, um, so I, I can't see him, you know, even if he's out there, I can't see him uh, uh, being too effective. Um, so give me the Bills with this one. But, yeah, this is going to be uh, – this is going to be it, bro. I'm not I'm not looking forward to this game, honestly. I'm I'm not I'm not. <laughs> yeah, this is a weird one. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna split with you. I'm gonna go with the Seahawks here. I think I've been the irrational Seahawks supporter. Shout out to to my guy, right? Mike McDonald. We still supporting you, but yeah, this is a weird one. I think offensively for both of these teams, it's would it's already accepted what you're gonna do. Defensively is what is confusing to me. <laughs> I think yeah. Uh the, C the Bills have overperformed while the Seahawks have underperformed the last three weeks at least. But I think ultimately I'm just so excited about Ken Walker and what he's been able to provide to this offense. I think no matter what, they're good to give you 23, 27 points. And honestly, the Bills, they haven't been putting up the, the amount of points every week. Um, yeah. Obviously, Amari Cooper is a great addition to put you in a position to do that. I just like the Seahawks here, especially because of that 12th man. But this is another coin flip game, man. And if this is the best offering we have this week, we in for some sludge, goddammit. But, hey, this next one ain't that bad. It ain't half bad. We got the Bears on yeah. the road against the Commanders, the number one overall QB versus the number two overall QB in this year's draft. Derek, how do you think this game's going to go? Um... I don't know because Jaden Jaden Daniels, uh, you know, he has a rib injury, so I, I don't, I can't expect I can't expect him to be out there playing this week. Um, I don't even know if he practiced this week. So, to me, because of that, this becomes a, a coin flip. Um, because the Bears, the Bears have been looking very interesting lately. So that's one way to put it. Yeah. <laughs> so um, give me the commanders. They're at home. I think it might be a, a, a low scoring game. Mm. 
I like that because I already wrote in both of our picks. I'm going with the Bears. I knew you was going with the Commanders. Yeah, uh, we're splitting again, ladies and gentlemen. So we're gonna get some uh, big changes in the standings, which I yes, love to sir. see. Um, I just think Caleb has really found something the last couple of weeks, and I think riding that momentum into this matchup where, like you said, we're not sure what's the status of the main QB. I wouldn't be surprised if this team could put up a lot of points, though, without him. I think Marcus Mariota looks serviceable, and obviously they still have a lot to play for considering they're in the race, right? They're in the thick of it. I think they're still number one, right? Is that correct? Okay. So, yeah, they got a lot to play for, but I think ultimately uh, the Bears are hitting their stride at the right time, and I think even if Jaden Daniels was playing, this was going to be a really hard game, especially because of the way the Bears have been playing on defense. Mm-hmm. Look out for Cole Komet to have a big game. I think uh, tight ends have done pretty good against the commanders, and I think uh, my guy Caleb Williams has found something with yeah. his tight end. But, uh, yeah, I, I, I won't be surprised if this is an offensive game despite the way the Bears have looked defensively. Um, and I still like the Bears to come out on top here just because of all those X factors. But, yeah, all 100% at, at, at full powers – I'm not sure I'm picking the Bears, but I like the momentum. So fuck it. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do it. it. Next up, we've got the new look Kansas City Chiefs on the road in another divisional matchup against the Las Vegas Raiders being led by the gunslinger himself, a man that you're very familiar with, Derek Gardner Minshew. Why don't you give us a full in-depth articulate explanation <laughs> of how you think this terrible game gets lost by the Raiders. Oh, um, simply put, they're screwed. <laughs> they are screwed, bro. Um, your number one receiver is Jacoby Myers, and I don't even know if he's playing, if he's if he's fully healthy right now. Um Hey, put some respect on Brock Bowers, all right? The oldest rookie in the history of the league. Oh, my God, yeah. <laughs> I don't care. It, it, they're not doing anything, bro. <laughs> they're not doing anything. I think um, uh, uh, Chris Jones is going to have a field day on Sunday. So give me the Chiefs, bro. I think I think they're going to definitely win this game. Go 7-0. Yeah, this is an ass whooping. This is a let's find out how bad we could fuck y'all up kind of game. Like, this isn't even a, a holy shit, let's go out there and try to win. Like, nah, this is a how how much can we make you hate yourself Yeah, kind of game, which I will yeah. admit, I like those kind of games. I'm just saying. Yeah. yeah. Who, who, <laughs> do you think, who do you think wins worse, the Raiders or the Titans this week? Wait, do you mean loses worst? Or? I'm sorry. Yeah, lose worse. I'm sorry. A few hours of sleep, bro. Damn, bro. Honestly? <laughs> That's a tougher question than most people might realize. Yeah. I'm going to say the Raiders, though, just because of who they're facing and what they've looked, what they're looking to accomplish with that offense. But yeah, won't be surprised either way. Both terrible Both franchises terrible. in yep. the absolute mud. Next up, we've got a couple more shitty games to look forward to. Yay. So why don't, we, <laughs> why don't we power through this, ladies and gentlemen? We've got the Panthers on the road against the Broncos of what could very well be the determining factor on who gets the number two pick in the draft, right? Who would have thought? Uh, maybe not. Maybe so. Sean Payton's trying to figure things out. Will, will the bounty end? Nobody knows. But we've got this mile-high showdown here. I'm going with the Broncos because, God damn it, even though I want to root for the Panthers, this, this team is, oh, man, a dumpster fire of levels that is unprecedented in the league. And I think the Broncos suck, too. But uh, not nowhere near as bad as the Panthers. But, hey, watch out for Jonathan Brooks. I think a lot of people are sleeping on what he brings and what he can accomplish as a rookie. But even then, I don't think they're going to be able to climb this mile-high mountain. Give me the Broncos. Yeah, give me the Broncos as well, man. Uh, you're, you're putting in Bryce Young back into the lineup, the starting lineup because Andy Dalton was in a car accident this week. So... I, I like. I have no faith that this is gonna work out for the Panthers anyway. So, give me the Broncos by default. Hey, somebody got to go out there and win. I love that. Next <laughs> up, <laughs> somebody got to get a dub. We've got a a rematch of every playoff game where the Forty ers smoked the Cowboys. 
on Sunday night football, ladies and gentlemen. But there's a new twist. This 49ers team, led by Glock Purdy himself, is without many weapons, brother. We've got we've got a lot of issues when it comes to the wide receiver room. Another funny meme I saw was a picture of Ricky Pearsall. <laughs> and it's like when this is your healthiest receiver and he got shot two months ago <laughs> you're fucked and i agree man the 49ers aren't in the best spot right now right they got a lot to overcome but guess what the cowboys are in an even worse spot ladies and gentlemen and it's funny because i am usually the guy right that's bringing the takes closer to earth mm-hmm. when it comes to the cowboys i'm usually like hey sh- be nice Derek. Right? they're not that bad right be nice you know th- this team is that bad Give me the absolute hobbled 49ers to absolutely handle the Cowboys at home. Hey, look, I'm taking the 49ers as well. But you know what I just thought about? <laughs> the Cowboys could have gotten DeAndre Hopkins as well <laughs> for as low of a price as that was. Yep. So, you know, what happens, happens. They're screwed too. Like, <laughs> imagine that though. Imagine after all of this, the Cowboys was like, you know, we need, we need a receiver. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they need the Lord. That's what they. Hey, man, yo, look, nothing's impossible for God. <sighs> <laughs> The cold world, man. <laughs> and just like that, we've got our Monday night football game to look forward to. The why last meme this? of the week. Do you why is why is this the game? I know why. Because <laughs> hey, remember when the Jets got their ass whooped last week? Oh yeah. They're like, hold on, hold on, hold on. We're gonna do this shit again. And you know it was my <laughs> my favorite uh meme as well. And I'll shut the fuck up about the memes. They were like uh yeah, Devontae Adams getting traded uh, straight to the Giants just so he can lose again to the Steelers. <laughs> and I was like, that that would be a stroke of irony if I've ever seen one. Um, yeah. yeah, shout out to the New York Giants for just absolutely having irrational confidence every year, right? For yeah. being the most irrational fan base ever, while also simultaneously knowing that you guys suck like hating everything about it, but also being irrationally confident. Yeah, there's no way. I'm confident here in saying this. The Steelers win this game 10 times out of 10. Mark it, book it, take your grandmother and fucking sell her, all right? This is the game. Throw it on Steelers' money line and don't look back. I agree. I I, I cannot choose the Giants, bro. There is no way. There's no the only way I could choose the Giants in this position is if they were going against the Titans. And even then, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> even then it's dicey. It's a toss up. Yeah, the neighbors oh, yeah. will think I'm selling dope if I pick yeah. the Giants here. I'm just saying. <laughs> Give me the Steelers on this one. Hey Derek, I hate that we had a horrible slate of games because this was a great fucking show, right? Yeah. Despite despite all of the comedy of errors that the schedule gave us, you know what? We took chicken shit and made chicken salad so yeah you're fucking welcome ladies and gentlemen how about that so derek take us home why don't you remind the people what they should do yes sir follow you hey look follow the brand that's what you should do you should follow the brand at ots media co all social media platforms ots media on youtube if you want you can follow me at Derek underscore OTS. That's D E R R I C K for black lady spelling. You heard the man. Make sure you follow me, Negron MMA, Twitter, TikTok. You got some shit coming. Instagram, Chris Negron underscore. And just like that, another classic is in the books. Ladies and gentlemen, let me remind you of one sweet thing, right? One sweet thing. No matter how hard this season may take a toll on you no matter how rough things go on your side of the field just remember that you are not the cleveland clowns catch you all (laughs) next week with no massage peace